Hello, travelers. Why don't you step into my office? Oh, wait. You're already here. This is my first video that I am recording in my very own office, in mine and Matt's very own apartment. I hope you're ready for me to be making things as if rents do, because it is. I also apologize if the audio is a little echoey. I hope one day I can afford furniture. So we're gonna be doing a little interior design video because I have an interior to design on a budget because God knows that is what we are on. But we did have a little hope, so I would like to thank this video's sponsor. <laughs> now, many an unanswered sponsor email has been in my inbox for the last few years, and a lot of them have been puzzle games, like on your phone. So when I saw Ravensburger Puzzles wanted me to promote their two tower puzzle game, I was like, cool, yeah, let's finally do one of these. As it turns out, it is an actual puzzle. I have never done an actual puzzle. Not since my 20 piece jigsaw days of old. So I was thinking I need the perfect Lord of the Rings-esque ambiance to complete this very meditative project of mine. Plus me and some friends are about to start an in-person Pathfinder game and we have to play in the kitchen because it's the only place with furniture. <laughs> I also hate cooking and I hate cleaning, but I might hate it a little less if I could pretend that I was a bar wench, cleaning up the local tavern who dreams of something more than all of this. So here are a few little and inexpensive things I did to make my kitchen feel a little more fantasy. So I stepped out my door and braved the cold Canadian winter. This will be the death of the hobbits. And I had my eye out for anything green or brown, anything like earthy, with of course some pastels sprinkled in. And I was also looking for anything made of wood or glass. Like bottles. <laughs> this is one of the things I do that satiates the fantasy nerd in me, but also maybe makes my parents proud. It just makes the kitchen look a lot nicer, but also I find it really helpful to be able to clearly see how much oil or dish soap I still have. Matt and me are making a little grocery list. And I just glanced over and saw, okay, we're low on olive oil and we have no cayenne pepper and it ain't half bad to look at either. <laughs> if you're looking to save even more money, you could just buy groceries in glass bottles and then just take the label off when you're done. I got this really cute oil bottle at Marshall's for $7 after getting very distracted by a pair of pink cowboy boots. Yeah, those went on my credit card pretty fast. They were on sale. <laughs> pink cowboy boots just don't come around every day. And certainly not on sale. Anyway, where were we? Filled it up with oil, and now it feels like I have a little egg frying potion. My partner and I also wanted some kind of spice rack, and I found this one at the dollar store. I love the dollar store. It's my, my favorite place in the world. None of the bottles there were really substantial in size, but luckily we also stopped by Bulk Barn, and they had these perfect alchemist test tube bottles. And they're too tall. And again, spice racks work as decor, but also have a quality of life function. It really beats rummaging around through all your big bags of spices. And again, helps you manage your inventory a little better when you can visually see the spice go down. We're gonna be putting the spices that we use most often in the bigger jars and the ones we use less often in the smaller ones, but how will we tell them apart? Well, we will not be buying labels in this household. We will be making our own. I remember one of my earliest videos on this channel while I was still in my university dorm was staining paper to look like parchment. And we're doing it again, baby. Just slapping my morning tea bag on the paper. And when it dries, I'm gonna write the name of the spice and we're just taping it on <laughs> with scotch tape. I feel like this will also make it easier to take it off if you wanna replace it with a new spice. Plus Bulk Barn, if you bring in your own containers, gives you a discount if you wanna fill it up. So it might be easier to sanitize it before bringing it in if we can just take it off, put it back on. Next tip, baskets. Very cottage core, very good. This is a basket I already had that I got kind of for free. Matt at one point sent me a fruits basket when we were still long distance and I was like, whoa, fruit and a free basket? So I just put a napkin in there and filled it back up with fruit. I also find that when fruit is right there, right in front of me, I'm more likely to grab it for a healthy snack than if it's tucked away somewhere. But you could put whatever you want in there. Little bags of Doritos, candy, flowers would be cute. 
makes it look like you just brought it back from the market. Plates. I love using little plates as kitchen organizers. If you have a kitchen, I assume you already have plates. It just makes the kitchen look so much more polished, but it also helps me to keep it clean. It feels a little bit like just putting the square peg in the square hole. If something is on the counter and not on the plate, put it away or put it on the plate. Get it out of there. Get it out of there. I'm using this wooden plate that I already had, but I also got this golden looking platter from the dollar store. It looks like I could fill it with cherry tomatoes and chomp on them while Billy Boyd sings to me. The dream. But this golden platter will be used for table makeover. So this piece of fabric was in the clothing section of the dollar store and is technically a scarf, but we're gonna be using it as a tablecloth. I love that a tablecloth adds a little bit of color to the kitchen, but also protects our most precious Facebook marketplace table. Seriously, it's my dream table. Love that table. It extends. Big spill, just take it off. Throw it in the wash. I then put together a little centerpiece and I kid you not, it is my favorite part of the apartment. I wake up, I go downstairs to make myself a coffee. I see the table and my heart skips a beat. <laughs> it sparks joy. Now I don't know if the comments will reflect this, but in my eyes, that's Pinterest worthy. I love centerpieces. It's just art that you eat next to. I find the trick to a good centerpiece, layers. One tall candle, one little candle, Little leaves, boom, layers. Vase, candle holder, knickknacks, layers. Stick that all on some kind of plate, you're good to go. Suddenly anyone that steps into your kitchen will be fooled into thinking you have your life together. These flowers in the vase are fake, again, the dollar store. But I didn't like that you could see the stems and they were obviously fake. So I just had some twine lying around that I hot glued to the bottom of the dollar store vase. I actually don't know if I love this look per se, but I love that it's less obvious that the flowers are fake now. I also had some purple twinkle lights that a friend gave me, so I shoved those all into the potion bottle and with the flick of a switch, it looks like magic and doubles as a light. I also decided to put salt and pepper into these tiny little potion bottles just so they would look less empty and also have a practical purpose but I don't know if it's dumb. There are many things I do in life that I wonder, is this dumb? And then I do it anyway. It's gotten me this far. I'm just a big fan of when decor things also have a practical purpose. Lights. So this is the priciest thing on the haul. I think it was like 30, $40 on Amazon, but I have always wanted lights that could change colors. Lights in my mind are essential for controlling the mood of a room. I went to one event called Armistice Arcane that literally used colored lights to try and direct the drama of the evening, and I still think it's so cool. You can deck a place out in whatever doodads you can afford, but lights can transform an entire space. Do I want to do the dishes underwater? in hell or in a Twitch streamer's apartment. I cannot wait for us to be playing a game of Pathfinder and I can be like, step into my castle adventurers, if you dare. But otherwise, if you just have it on a soft color or like white light, it looks really nice. It turned out to be like a really subtle way to make the kitchen look bougier. Here's a little tip. Natural light, like from the sun or moon, creates cool tones. Unnatural light, like from a light bulb or a flame, creates warm tones. So to make my kitchen feel more like it's being lit by a lantern, I'm giving it like a soft orange. These lights connect to an app on my phone that has an entire color wheel. So I'm very happy with this purchase. I love color wheels. Music. The puzzle that will be consuming my thoughts for a while is a visual experience. So I would like some audio stimulation and music can subtly control whatever emotion you're supposed to be feeling in any given moment. So I think it'll be really helpful for a game night or if I'm trying to stay motivated making dinner. I normally have my Bluetooth headphones on while I'm tidying, but for the sake of this video, I put my little Google Home in the kitchen. And I was genuinely surprised by the difference it made. I am physically always aware that something is squeezing my head when I have headphones on. And since the sound is always following me, it never feels connected to a space. It suddenly felt like I was playing a video game. Like, you know, when you walk into a certain area of a video game and the music builds up until you hear that 
very familiar shop theme. So I subconsciously started associating my little medieval lo-fi playlist to my kitchen and I started enjoying being there. Plants. Plants are good. We all know this. I, however, have never been able to keep a plant alive. Every plant I have ever owned is dead. But Matt got me this little automatic garden for Christmas. You just have to fill it with plant food and water, stick the little pods in it, and then everything is automatic. It just flashes red when you have to refill it, and look, it is thriving. It makes me feel like I'm thriving. I'm finally able to live my little cottage core dream. And all of these plants can be used in cooking and in singing Scarborough Fair. You know, parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. And there ain't no feeling like it. Picking off a, picking off a leaf and throwing it in the pan. I'm like a hobbit. I have a love of all things that grow, peace, quiet, food, and I never want to do anything unexpected. I'm also going to drape some fake greenery I got from the dollar store on the top of the cabinets. I genuinely don't know how this will turn out. I think I might need something with a little more body. The actual greenery on Amazon wouldn't have gotten here in time. If people on Pinterest make it look really good. <laughs> and the final tip, cloaks, hear me out. Hear me out. I know I got my start on this godforsaken thing we call the internet making LARP videos. I know I already have cloaks lying around from my days of dress up. But all I'm saying is if you have no practical reason to own a cloak, yes you do. They are blankets you can attach to yourself. House coats make me feel like a divorced mom who smokes a pack a day and is still trying to get back out there. Hoodies make me feel like I would sooner jump out a window than answer the door. That might, <laughs> that might not be specific to Udi's. That might just be me in general. Cloaks are very simple to take on and off and are so cozy. I feel magical. I feel mysterious. I feel warm. And it is just a blanket with a hood and ties. Put that shit in a basket by the couch. Your visitors will never be the wiser unless they take it out. And then what a conversation starter that would be. You can then recruit other people to my cult of the cloak. <laughs> this is a pyramid scheme. I am not ashamed of that. Anyway, kitchen decor. So here's a little before and after, and I in total maybe spent close to $90, which is like what one thing costs at home sense. Now to get very extra, I am going to put away any electronics, hide the outlets as much as I can, put on some mood lighting and music, focus on my breathing, and we're gonna do this puzzle while we thank our sponsor. Thank you to Robinsberger Puzzles for sponsoring this video. In my mind, there are people that don't do puzzles, and then there are puzzle people. People who talked about puzzles as if it wasn't a pastime, it was a lifestyle. But now, I get it. It is a lifestyle. It was a fixture in our home for days. Every time I walked by, I loved finding a new piece to add. I did have help from my friend and my partner who love puzzles. Da, 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 da. <laughs> the first piece joined! The first piece has been joined! <laughs> they both have done a bunch, and they assured me that this was a quality puzzle. It's, like done. it's very, yes. <laughs> My friends specifically said they could tell because the pieces interlocked perfectly together. No piece fit that wasn't supposed to fit, which meant every curve was unique to that piece. <laughs> The picture was crisp and vibrant, and I noticed they even included subtle wave markings, which made large sections that seemed like solid colors a lot less frustrating. They're specifically marketing this as an immersive illustrated map of Middle Earth, and since that's half my brand, I know what a throwaway buzzword immersive can be, so I was a little skeptical. But I genuinely felt immersed. I thought I would have to force my way through it for the sake of the ad, but I found myself getting sucked in. I loved finding a piece and figuring out it was the other half of Aomir's face. Seeing the ring of power slowly snap together was so satisfying. And I honestly felt my mental health improving, at least more than it would if I was playing a video game. This is a 2000 piece puzzle which took up our entire table and was a thousand pieces more than my friends said they would usually do. So it was a challenging puzzle, but I never felt like it was impossible. It became a really fun group project in the apartment and honestly, turned me into a puzzle person. So thank you again to Ravensburger Puzzles. You can find their link in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Seriously, I have 
my own roof over my head again, and it's thanks to your support, especially to my supporters on Patreon. I am so incredibly lucky that I have done the math, and if my health continues to improve in the ways that it has, and I work hard, I can do this thing that I did out of love all the time now. I, I can be a dork for a living. I don't know if I'll ever find the words to communicate my gratitude. Times are tough right now, and the fact that so many people are using their hard-earned money and precious spare time to uplift me it leaves me speechless. Uh, thank you. That's... That, that's all I can find the words to say. Okay! We're done! <laughs> I'm gonna go sit in my kitchen now. Bye, everybody! Do, 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 do.